our topic is an intriguing topic. The Quran, the Great War, and the West. And while there are many, many in the world who are already expecting, anticipating that there is going to be a great war and it will be comparable and even greater than the two great wars we've already had in the last century the first world war and the second world war they have come to the conclusion that a great war is coming based on political analysis based on analysis of military affairs etc but we are approaching the subject from a different perspective we are approaching the subject from the perspective of religion and so this is not a secular analysis and secular scholarship the ones who have done their PhDs in political science from Columbia University and from Harvard uh, secular scholarship is quite uncomfortable with religion religion intruding in what they consider to be their exclusive scholarly space and so tonight's lecture presents more than simply a minor problem for those who are ministers of government today advising the new prime minister of Pakistan and uh, those who are holding the chairs of political science etc in different universities and our advisors and so we are going to speak slowly and briefly uh, so that hopefully we might be able to with Allah's kindness make an impact upon the secular mind the religious mind already has faith in its heart but the secular mind is not and there's another reason why we have to be brief Today mankind lives in what is known as the fast lane where things are moving faster and yet faster. A whole year passes as though it was just a month and a whole month passes as though it was just a week and the whole week passes as though it was just a day. Are you familiar with these words? Yes, you shake your heads. This is the prophecy, this is the prophecy, not of a political science professor from Columbia University. This is the prophecy of a man named Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fast lane in life. And in the fast lane of life, attention span becomes shorter and shorter. So if today we speak for 45 minutes, and after that they still cannot they cannot absorb anything beyond that tomorrow we'll have to speak for half an hour and beyond that they won't be able to absorb because the attention span is contracting because this is akhirul zaman the end time secular scholarship knows nothing about the end time but our Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, told us that there is going to be Akhirul Zaman or the end time. And we know that we, were, we are living in the end time when, for example, he said, women will be dressed and yet naked. And he said, women will dress like men 
in order of course to assume the functional role of men in society and I'm now stepping on some people's toes so they're not going to be happy with me women will be dressed as men why so that they can assume the functional role of men in society but he went on to say that men <laughs> would be dressed like a woman you're not going to see him <laughs> dressed in a rarara <laughs> oh, sorry no 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 <laughs> when he said that men would be dressed like women it implies among other things that they will abandon the functional role of men in society among the things he prophesied about the end time is a sequence of events which will occur he is speaking with his companion Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he says to him to Mu'az Umranu baytil maqdis kharabu yatrib that when Jerusalem is center stage now recognized as the capital of the state of Israel <laughs> So it's moving to center stage using the analogy of construction when Jerusalem is center stage then look to Yathrib and there are those who are not happy with the Prophet why is he using the word Yathrib why does he use the word Medina <laughs> I don't have time for Polish people he said look to Yatrib and Yatrib will be in ruins Yani playing absolutely no role in the world in forlorn desolation at that time he said the next event that will occur major event he said Kharabu Yatrib Khurujul Malhama that the next event to occur when Jerusalem has reached center stage and Yathrib is in forlorn desolation would be the great war there you are and so when we come to the subject of the great war we do it from a religious perspective based in our religion that our prophet Allah's blessings be upon him has prophesied the great war he went on to say Khurujul Malhama Fathul Constantinia. That when the Great War takes place, the next event to occur would be the conquest of Constantinople. And then he went on to say, Fathul Constantinia, Khurujul Dajjal. That after the conquest of Constantinople, the next event which will occur would be Dajjal appearing in human form and so now you can see that Islamic eschatology has something to offer in explaining the Great War because the Great War does not take place in a vacuum by accident but rather the Great War forms part of a sequence of events which will culminate with the false messiah emerging in human form to rule the world from Jerusalem from what he would claim to be the holy state of Israel the Khilafah state of Israel and to then declare I am the messiah when the great war takes place yes as we see from the Quran that there is going to be frightful consequences for most of mankind oh yes but Pakistan in particular ought to be paying attention to this subject because it is my opinion and of course when I offer an opinion I insist it should never be accepted unless and until you are convinced that I am correct because I make mistakes oh yes 
it is my opinion that as soon as that great war commences an attack is going to be launched on Pakistan if not before at least at that time and when the attack is launched on Pakistan it will be to denuclearize Pakistan and having denuclearized Pakistan to then break up